He struggles to the breakfast table, still hung over, hardly able to come to terms with Monday's new demands. To activate the microwave, to reheat Friday's takeaway. The cafe- Hi, this is Fish, the only talking, singing, and dancing fish in the world, and you're listening to Model.com, the Prog Radio. Thank you very much, and a very happy Christmas for a man whose beard is far too long at this moment in time. As he retches in the sink to change his ways, he dreams in... Well, it started off when, um, when I went to Egypt for a Valentine's Day thing in 2005, and we went up to... I was there with my girlfriend at the time. <clears throat> we went up to the, the Valley of the Kings, and... Uh, it was in, in the tombs. They have all the, the the ceilings are all painted up in blue with yellow stars, all hand painted, and um, the stars as a symbol just took me. It was just every one of these was individually painted, and there's like there's like hundreds of thousands of stars that are all hand painted on the ceilings, and it denotes heaven. And I just thought it was a great symbol. It was like the fact that you know the, the stars underground denoting heaven. There was a certain irony in it, and. Um, I took that as the first image and as something that I thought I could use. And I was taken, and I mean, I'd always wanted to go to Egypt and I'd, I'd was seen a lot of places and things that I'd always wanted to see. And of course you get caught up in the kind of mysticism of it all. And it was, um, and it was the whole idea of the journey. I mean, you know, A, the journey of the pharaohs from the tombs up to Sirius, etc., etc., you know. And um, in October, November of that year, the relationship split. And um, I was going for a period of introspection and uh, I was looking at relationships in particular. You know, it was like I'd, the, the relationship that had gone down was something that I really wanted, but for other reasons it, it didn't happen. And, um, and uh, I was, go- as I said, examining kind of previous relationships and I actually worked out there was 12 females they would actually been really important in my life, from my mother to Kay to my ex-wife to Tara, my daughter, and things. And um, and that there was uh, no, it was thirteen, and it happened to also be thirteen was the number of albums. This was my thirteenth studio album, including the four that I did with Marillion. And thirteen's always been a kind of lucky number for me. I've always, I've never looked at it as being an unlucky number. And um, and it just kind of came to be. But of course. With the idea of stars, navigation came into it, compasses, which is a lot of the, the, the symbolism that's on the cover. You know, the fact that there's the boat sailing away. It's all about journeys. It's all about discovery. You know, the album is about, the, the, the lyrical concept is about self-discovery. It's about somebody who's trapped in a mundane lifestyle, lifestyle who has to break out. He's held back by an anchor of a kind of previous relationship and he's nervous to get involved again. and. He doesn't know how to get involved again, and uh, the album is about that journey to try and find the person, and he finds somebody who isn't. The, turns out not to be the right person, but that propelling factor takes him forward and enables him to make the journey towards the thirteen star. Just another day on the circle line, losing myself as I follow signs beneath the surface. Zoe Twenty Five was um, we had I was working in Fellini days. Uh, and I was working with John Wesley, and John being American, I hadn't really seen kind of any kind of page three kind of stuff in the sun. You know, we have this thing in Britain where we have large-breasted women on page three of our deal, on national newspapers. And um, what happened was we, I was quite enamoured with this one particular girl called Zoe, who was then 19, and she was particularly beautiful and reminded me of, of a, a girl that I was actually seen at, at that time. So... Um, it's only 19 was kind of the, the photo, she had two photographs of her on the wall, right? And when we came in to work on this album, the very first week that Steve Vances and I started writing, it was Zoe 25 from London, I just went, it just sounded great, Zoe 25 from London. And originally the track was going to be called The Mickle Gate, but I just, I figured, I changed the style of the writing on it, so it became a very kind of Ray Davis Kinks kind of uh, vibe, you know, very kind of commentary on a London play, you know? This time last year, I was in love. This time last year, the not really. It was more like I just got into it, and Steve and I. When we, it was really useful because when we were writing the album, you know, I was going into my old vinyl collections and listening to a lot of stuff, and Steve was introducing me to things. So every night after we'd finished writing, you know, we'd kind of swap music. You know, I'd play him like, "Have you heard this?" and he'd go, "Have you heard this?" So it was interesting. So there was a real melting pot of influences and styles 
that kind of came to be. And it was like, yeah, I really like the way they did this. And it was interesting hearing some of the Gentle Giant stuff. But I think I looked on the, the, the program on, on Planet Rock because, you know, they gave me free run. You know, I didn't have to watch a playlist. So it was like, okay, let's play what we want, what I want to play. And it's like, yeah, let's play people stuff that they would never normally hear on radio, like Van der Graaff, like Gentle Giant, like PFM, you know, Druid, bands like that, as well as things like Ry Cooder, Jackson Brown and stuff, you know. The other DJs were a bit jealous because I was given such free reign. But it was a really successful programme, and I'm looking forward to going back. I don't know when I'm going to go back to do the programme again, but I will be back this ne next year. So. I think it was confidence. I think Steve's confidence. Uh, you know, he'd, he'd been building up over the years, you know, over the last couple of years, building up little ideas. And I think that was always really came down. Eh? And it was, you know, there was a space, you know, I didn't really know who my writing partner was going to be for 30 Star. And Steve suggested himself, and it was like, and he played me some ideas, and they were great. You know, I really liked him. And he was, <clears throat> he's a, he had a very fresh attitude, a very healthy attitude. You know, he wasn't, you know, sometimes you work with a writer and they can, they've got such a definitive approach, they're very difficult to kind of work with, you know. And, you know, people, have, I've been lucky, like people like Steve Wilson I've worked with in the past, you know, when Steve and I first worked in Sunsets, you know, he was open to ideas and I was open to his ideas and, and that was the same way as Steve Lancis and I worked as well. It was, it was just two people that were committed to writing great, great music. I watched your sails disappear into the distance I saw my life in the Yeah, I mean, it's something, it's something I want to do. I, want to, I definitely want to write something that's more... I mean, at the moment, I'm practising on email blogs. I mean, my blogs are becoming a bit famous. And, it's, um, and I've got really into writing the blogs. It's been great to break up the time on the tour, although I shoot, I'm well behind. Because, you know, as a singer, I'm the one that's... that's I'm the last off the bus. I mean, I sleep as much as I can. Because, you know, every time that you've got two hours of very demanding performance. But, I mean, I've enjoyed writing, and it's like going down the gym, you know, I'm just writing, using words, and finding a style, in a way. So it's something that will happen probably this year, in the summer, when the time starts to break up. But I don't know, just see what happens. You know? I've got three weeks in Vietnam, so I'm sure that's going to be interesting. I go down to Vietnam for Christmas, New Year, for three weeks. So I'm, I'm going to be taking that as an opportunity to do some writing. I think there was there was a decision that was made for me. I mean, I think back in the early days. I mean, you know, I got a chance to do some movies, and if I'd gone into acting then, I think it would have been a lot more important in my career. But then again, you know, I would have probably still been in Marillion, So I mean, it's all by the by. The problem with acting is I never get a chance to do as much as I want because of my commitment to albums and touring, and because you know, if I do acting, I tend to be small character actors. You know, I'm not a big actor. So when I do get offers, you know, I do an audition three months before the movie and I'll get a phone call six weeks before. But of course, with, with, with um, albums, with touring, you're working on a far longer time frame. So it's difficult to find the windows of opportunity to put movie work in. I look on it as a hobby. I mean, I, I see writing screenplays as, as probably a more logical step than, than becoming an actor. I mean, I enjoy acting, but I see writing as being more of a... Play more of an important part in my life in the future. Finding elephants in the backstage area. Because it was so huge? Yeah, it was a circus on. I opened up this huge door and it was a herd of elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Blind, then I will never see again when we are